Uh, so I'm just going to do a karakia because we've already had the council blessing at our previous meeting today. So I found one that does mention respect. Kia hora te marino, kia whakapaka pounamu te moana, he huarahi ma tato i te rangine, aroha atu, aroha nui, tato i a tato katoa, huie tahiki e. May peace be widespread, may the sea be like greenstone, a pathway for us today. Let us show respect for each other, for one another. Apologies. No. Declarations of interest relating to items on the agenda have not been alerted. Public speaking time for items relating to the agenda. We've got two members of the public. No. Members business. Mayor's report, I'm sorry, um, my PA is on sick leave. So one of my 10 arms have been cut off. <laughs> Very good. Um, I must apologize also, I had a flu shot yesterday and they also gave me a tetanus shot and a whooping cough shot, all three in one. So my voice is a little bit, so if you know that I've got an accent, it's not the Indian in me, it's the vaccination. We are going to rolling start here. <laughs> reports, um, the first reports, appointments with the Wellington region, climate change. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, public speaking time. Leave of absence. Sorry. You can you can sit here. The seat is empty. Leave of, any leave of absence. No. Okay. Um, I've got a, a matters of an urgent nature, and it's been related to you. Um, copies have been sent to you. Um, I had. You want to speak on that? Point of order. Yes, Councillor Randall. Um, point of order, Mr Chair. Um, I draw your attention to item 9.12 about items of business not on the agenda. And uh, are you f My question to you is, is the procedure being followed that you just said? It is a matter of urgency. Yeah, but it's a procedure, the process. It, it says there, a meeting may deal with an item of business that is not on the agenda, where the meeting resolves. So sh surely it should go to a vote, Mr Chair. No, matters of an urgent nature, the advice is provided to the Chair prior to the commencement of the meeting. This was related to me, and I've exercised that ability. Like in all matters of urgency, you can come and tell me just before the meeting you've got something to raise. That's what it is. Okay. Well, I have to accept your ruling, but to me, it would um, signify that you, it needs to be resolved by the meeting to agree to what your action is. Yep. Yeah. Um, if if I could explain, um, the the point that you're um, alluding to, councillor. Um, gives the opportunity for members um, should um, <coughs> the chair or the CE introduce a matter of an urgent nature with an explanation of why it is urgent in this case it, it's because of the pressure of time um, which is explained in the short covering report um, so it is genuinely a matter of an urgent nature but um, the uh, standing orders provide opportunity to, for members to, de to decline to accept it as a matter of an urgent nature so you could resolve so so to do if you wish to and therefore the matter would not go ahead right, th thank you so do you want to speak to that i mean you can reject it after we've done introduce the matter so so essentially um the reason this is a matter of an urgent nature um the mayor of Porirua city council um 
wrote to the mayor last only last week um, about um, a remit that they would like to put forward um, to uh, LGNZ AGM conference. Um, now, uh, it's not unusual for us to receive a request to um, ask members to support a remit of another council, should a, a council wish to put a remit forward to LGNZ, and we, we've done it ourselves in the past. Um, you, you can either um, seek support from your zone, in this case it would be zone four, but or you can um, select to request that four other councils support your remit, and that's what Porirua have chosen to do. So they wrote to the mayor asking for support um, for their remit regarding puppy farming, um, and that's what's before members today. And the reason it's before you as a matter of an urgent nature is that Porirua need to get back to LGNZ with their remit by the 14th of May. Mr Chair? Yeah. Um, having looked at 9.12 and 9.13, it does say where the meeting resolves to deal with that item, so I'm happy to move that this item be dealt with today. So you've moved it as an elegant way of resolving this matter. Uh, moved by um, Councillor Holborough, seconded by Councillor Elliott. Can you repeat that? So uh, I resolve that the item before us be dealt with at the meeting today. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Those against? Carry it. Can we not? Um, there's nothing really to add to um, the report. The, the remit is, is self-explanatory. Um, and it, it's purely, purely and simply a request from Porirua for um, members to confirm if they are happy um, to support Porirua City Council in their remit, and if so, um, the support of members of Kapiti Coast District Council will be noted on their remit when it goes forward to LGNZ. To add to that, um, we have done it ourselves in terms of seeking support from other councils, and this is just a uh, collegial support to a neighbouring council to enable them to table this remit as to what happens to the remit, will, uh, whether they get enough support or it is resolved that it will come out in the AGM is yet to be determined. So it is just a matter of providing uh, support to a neighbouring council's remit. Anybody else wants to discuss this? Otherwise, would somebody Move the recommendation oh, 15. Can I, can I ask? Uh, Councillor Randall. Yeah, I'd like to ask through you, Chair, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, two questions. One is, I've looked at the report and it says that the government, the government does not isn't, isn't prepared to in, adopt any law change. They think it's okay. And then secondly, do we do we receive do we get any report from our dog our dog team as to what they think of this? Is it an is it an issue in Kapiti? That's what I'm trying to say. I might hand over to um, Mr. James Jefferson at this point um, and um, let him answer some of that question at least. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we're not aware of it being a significant issue in Kapiti. Uh, we are aware that there is uh, the puppy farming and it is brutal around the country. There are some limited... Um, options in buried deep in current legislation but they are not effective for agencies to deal with it and, and so on that basis we've supported the mayor from an operational point uh, perspective that a review uh, of the legislation is required. Councillor Elliott. Um, there being no more questions uh, I would like to move this recommendation. <clears throat> um, yep, and uh, look, I'm delighted to see this come across our table. Um, thank you. It is a remit that we ourselves tried two years ago to um, bring through this process um, to LGNZ AGM for their consideration. And as the um, mum of a rehomed puppy farm bitch dog, I'm very, very happy with this. Thank you. And seek your support. 
Anybody else? Yep. Um, I'm also happy, very, very happy to support this through you, Mr. Chair. The purpose of supporting remits isn't just to identify what's important in our local community, but also to provide our support to other councils where they identify issues that are important to them that need to be addressed at a national level. And on that basis, I'm very happy to support this. I absolutely. Councillor Holborough. I mean, sorry, Angela Butler. I support what um, Janice has, uh, Janet has, has just said, um, and I know um, that Hoo-Ha, which are a local um, charitable organisation, they deal a lot with puppy farmed dogs. They actually can't rehome because they are so cruelly treated, um, and it is, it's not necessarily a problem with puppy farming in Kapiti, but I would say that many um, local residents are receivers of puppy farmed puppies. Um, they are really desirable out there, unfortunately, and that's what feeds that market um, through greed and um, yeah, mis mistreating of animals. And I think that if we can do that as a um, as a district to support other districts in moving this, I think it's really important. I know that the Horafanua have had um, major issues um, with this kind of thing, so totally support it. There's nobody else speaking on it. I'm going to put the recommendation 15, moved by Councillor Elliott, seconded by Councillor Holborough. Those in favour say aye. Aye. Those against, carry it. Thank you very much. Now we're going to um, item 8 reports. Appointments to Wellington Region Climate Change Forum. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so this report is before members today um, purely because um, Wellington Regional Council have resolved to um, dissolve um, the existing um, body, the Wellington Regional Climate Change Working Group, um, as of the 1st of July, and introduce in its place um, the Wellington Region Climate Change Forum. Um, this, this is following... Um, some analysis um, of the work and aims of the existing group um, and um, some changes that have been introduced for the new forum as a result of that. Um, and in terms of the question before members today, um, simply it is that for the old body at the beginning of the triennium, um, the mayor and councillor Hanford um, were appointed by members to the existing um, group at that point. So the mayor was as member and councillor Hanford as the second. The new group, however, the forum, um, requires actually two members. Um, now both councillor Hanford and his worship, the mayor, have confirmed that they are happy to continue and would like to continue to be involved in the new forum. So the um, question before members today is, um, to um, please consider to um, appoint both His Worship the Mayor and Councillor Hanford to the Wellington Region Climate Change Forum as of the 1st of July this year. Questions? No. Would somebody move? Recommendation. Uh, I'm on the list. Councillor Elliott, you moved? Sorry, no, um, I just need a question, yep. please. I've looked through the terms of reference and I'm wondering within this uh, forum there is facility for a proxy elected member to attend meetings either in place of or accompanying um, either of the members that are appointed. I don't believe there is, um, but uh, but um, the, yeah. So it, essentially, that is the change really from one member and a proxy. Um, to two members instead. Um, and, and what um, Wellington were finding was that both people were turning up anyway in a lot of cases. Um, so they've, they've actually made the move to have two members rather than one member in a proxy. Any other questions? Councillor Holiday. Uh, you through you, Mr. Mayor. Look, I was just noting on page 10, 3.1b, um, it talks to up to 12 Mana Whenua members. Uh, being two members appointed by each iwi signatory to the memorandum of partnership. So I just was just curious to know uh, which iwi 
do we have signed up to that memorandum of partnership um, as such? And um, uh, they, I'm just assuming they have a process for um, uh, for electing and being members for this as well. Uh, so uh, just to explain, Councillor, that's not our member memorandum of partnership. That refers to Aratahi, um, the memorandum of partnership um, that sits with uh, Wellington. Uh, regional Council and um, local iwi. So it included in that, um, uh, for members' reference, uh, Ngāti Toa, um, Te Ati Awa, um, Ngāti Rākaua are, are all included within the, within the six there. So they'll be re being required to supply two members as well, directly? They will have the opportunity to pr provide membership, yes. Right, thank you. And I can tell you that um, Dr. Mahina Rangi Baker has got a very strong, very, very strong influence in there. No other questions? Moved by Councillor Gwyn Compton, seconded by James Coates. Intro? Fine. Um, all those in favour say aye. aye. Those against? Thank you. It's carried. Eight point two consideration of a Maori war. It's all yours. Thank you, Your Worship. Through you. Um, good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to take this opportunity um, to formally introduce to you Sarah Watty, our Governance and Legal Services Manager. This is her first time um, presenting a paper to you today. Um, and with that, I'm going to hand over to her to introduce the report. Thank you, Janice, and thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, so the, the report uh, before us now is concerns the establishment of a Māori ward. Uh, so I'll just highlight a few key points um, just in context. So as I think you'll all be aware, uh, Council considered this matter in October last year. Um, Council has, uh, uh, for a number of years, been guided by the views of our iwi partners, um, Te Atiawa, uh, Ngāti Tōranga, Rangatira and Nahapu Otaki, um, who we recognise as mana whenua of the district um, on, on these matters. Uh, in October, Council resolved not to establish a Māori ward guided by the views of our iwi partners. Uh, in March this year, the Local Electoral Māori Wards and Constituencies Act was introduced, um, which introduced a number of key changes uh, which concern uh, the establishment of Māori wards. So uh, the key changes um, in, uh, for many are perceived as removing some of the barriers to, um, to one mechanism for Māori representation on council. So uh, number one, it removed the ability for electors to bring a, uh, a petition for a binding poll uh, regarding the establishment of a Māori ward. Um, so only council now can resolve um, uh, on the question of establishing a Māori ward, uh, either to establish one or, or not. Um, number two, it removed the ability for local authorities to resolve to hold a binding poll um, on, on this question. And number three, it, um, it resolved that any polls um, on, on this question um, would cease to have effect. So a few key changes. Um, as a result, um, the, the Amendment Act also extended the deadline for councils, uh, local authorities, to reconsider the question of Māori wards. Um, so we have reconsulted with, our, with each of our iwi partners, um, and all three partners uh, have confirmed that at present they do not support the establishment of a Māori ward, preferring instead to focus on strengthening um, their partnership with council um, uh, at present, however, wish to further discussions on the matter in the next triennium. Um, if if, the, if we uh, if council resolved to establish a multi ward in the next triennium, this would trigger a further representation review um, in addition to the review currently underway. So those those are the key points. Um, uh, and thank you, Mr. Mayor. Happy to take any questions through you. Councillor Rendell. Yeah. Um, Sorry, in relation, through you, Mr. Mayor, in relationship to paragraph 21, shouldn't it be the word it be that that um, will formally withdraw 
This is about Te Atiawa. Um, yeah, we have an error in the date. That should have been September 2020. We are not um, foreseeing the future. Thank you for pointing that out, Councillor. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Compton. Uh, thank you. Through the Mayor, um, I'm just interested in, there seems to be a little bit of inconsistency in terms, Wellington's uh, voted to investigate implementing Māori wards, and Ngāti Tōa have come out and said they're actually open to that in the Wellington context, and they're actually adding mana whenua representatives to their committees as well. But then in our context, they're saying they want it on the back burner. I'm just trying to understand the inconsistency there. Um, so we have, we've consulted independently, but together with all of our three EU partners, and they've confirmed that they want to collectively... Um, oh, thank you. Uh, two of which have provided statements to confirm that that, um, that at present they, they do want to focus on strengthening the partnership, which might include exploring other ways that we can, um, we can look at Māori representation through our governance structure. Um, but but in, on the question of Māori wards, uh, they do want to continue the conversation, um, but not ahead of this representation review. Um, the timing is tight. This is the last opportunity to, to reconsider it. Um, the date is, I think, the end of May. Um, so, so not now, but um, not never, is, is the position of, of um, all three iwi partners at present. I can perhaps add yeah. to that. Yeah. Um, I think, just to add to um, what Sarah's just said, I think it probably is a reflection of um, the current nature of the conversation here within this district um, and the, um, the fact that we are at an important early stage in a conversation around what the future of our partnership um, with mana whenua moving forward might look like. And I, um, without being um, totally across the nature of the partnership that Ngāti Tōa has with Wellington City, I think, um, I, I, I don't think we need to know the, the detail of that to, to um, I guess, be mindful of the fact that they potentially have different conversations and different interests within Kapiti than they do in Wellington, and that could be a factor in it. But I, I wouldn't want to speak for them on that point. I guess I'm sharing an observation. Just a uh, follow-up question as well. So we obviously have a Māori representative on the Strategy and Operations Committee and I think one of the grants um, subcommittees as well. Are they remunerated at all for those positions, similar to how Wellington City Council's moving to do for their um, every, well, mana whenua representatives there? They get meeting allowances. Um, I probably need to note that we don't currently have a Māori representative appointed to strategy and operations. That is um, something that we continue to work with Te Whakameninga on and it's the um, subject of some conversations at the moment regarding are there other options that we could consider. Thank you. I think um, there is some work being done in terms of looking at how council's responsibilities are under the Local Government Act and the issues of the RMA also involved in that so that we know exactly what the legal framework in which we are working so that then we can negotiate the independent um, relationship with our three mana whenua. That's work under progress. May I add one more point there, Mr Mayor? Okay. I think um, just to pick up on some of your other comments around Wellington City, um, it is worth acknowledging that um, uh, all councils uh, have the opportunity to do what Wellington City has done in terms of varying their governance structure, which is a decision that you know that a council can make to provide for um, greater opportunities for uh, a mana whenua voice or a Māori voice within decision making. Councillor Holiday, uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Look, I just wanted to clarify um, with regards to um, the discussions to be had over the next three years. Um, Really, it's going to be six years, uh, and because um, if we do something within the next three years, that will trigger a second representation or review process and associated cost as well. Would that be correct? It would. However, we have a. Um, it has been our practice in recent years to um, seek feedback from our iwi partners on this point every triennium. So oh, we have that. we have been asking. Um, well, it's my understanding anyway that we have been asking regularly. Um, uh, iwi ha our iwi partners have been clear with us that they, the last time we asked and, and the time before that that they wanted it reconsidered 
in the next triennium. I guess the other point that I would make is that my understanding of the um, legislative changes that the government put in place um, in March is that that was a holding position um, to make an immediate change now while, they, while the government considered um, what mechanism they might want to put in place uh, for the future in terms of ensuring representation for Māori. So uh, if the current arrangements were to stay the same, then yes, a Māori ward would trigger a representation review. However, if the government makes different legislative arrangements and they have indicated that they are reviewing that, then um, it wouldn't necessarily trigger a representation review as we know it now. I think the other important point to know the, note there is that um, a represent, sh should that happen and therefore trigger a representation review, it wouldn't necessarily need to be a significant body of work as this current representation right. review is either. And uh, look, just noted as well, you talked to the three iwi being the um, uh, consultation group in this, in which I fully support and agree with. Um, but we do have, uh, obviously, a, a part of our community who um, are not affiliated to the three iwi um, as well, being general Māori. Um, and um, but, uh, I guess I'm comforted to hear that that's going to be part of that conversation with regards to how Māori are represented on the Kapiti Coast moving forward. Is that right? Um, so we, our, our primary, um, our primary way of, um, I guess, progressing those conversations is via our mandated iwi partners. <coughs> Having said that, your councillor Martin. You are quite correct. The Local Government Act mentions Māori. So that is part of the, like I was responding to Council Compton, that we need to know the legal framework within which Council is required to act first. And so there's work being done and there will be discussion for us um, to, to get our position strong enough in the negotiations with the three Manafenoa and others. Um, if I may, Mr Mayor, um, just to confirm, we um, have had legal advice on how we've um, gone about um, seeking feedback on this and our legal advice is that we have, well, that what we've done is appropriate. <coughs> Council Coates. Um, Councillor Compton raised a good point in regards to Wellington City Council and the approach to the year with Ngāti Toa. There's other councils around the country that have come out and made decisions or in the process of, I think, Taupe from memory, uh, Whanganui and, and so forth. Is it, is it um, fair to say that uh, not all councils have the same level of representation to start with? So we're not all starting at ground zero and then looking at, and is that potentially why we're seeing um, the response that we're seeing from our treaty partners? Um, I think I... Uh, Potentially, I mean, we have a long-standing partnership with the three iwi who are mana whenua in this district, and that in itself is, um, uh, I wouldn't say unique, but certainly not standard across other councils. We have a proud history of, of that partnership, um, and it definitely isn't reflected in, in other districts and cities in quite the same way. Yeah. Um, so, so I guess in that sense... Um, <coughs> progress and the ongoing maturity of relationships and partnerships between councils and mana whenua might look different in different locations depending on, as you've said, where you're starting from. Thank you. And I guess to follow up from that, if I could um, just pick apart a little bit more the uh, response. It, it, although it's a no, it's not a, a no, never, it's just a no, not at this time. And I think as you pointed out, it's they're up for that discussion. But more importantly, to strengthen that existing relationship that is not usual amongst councils around the rest of the country. Yes, absolutely. And just to add to what Janice said in relation to the legal advice that we have, um, we have sought um, the the um, the advice that we've been given has confirmed that um, that we're particularly um, uh, uh, sound in relying on a well-established partnership um, with our three iwi partners um, because of 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 the established relationship and working together for a number of years, um, and that being that being the mechanism to to primarily not for every issue but to facilitate Maori decision making under the Local Government Act. <coughs> Excuse me. Councillor Hanford. I just have a question around the publicity of the kind of decision that's made today through the standard communications channels. I note that that's in the report, but 
I'm just wondering in terms of the communication of the reasons why, like communicating the rationale, communicating the views of mana whenua, if that's something they'll be kind of doing themselves or what role we have in, in kind of making sure that that's heard because I'm just, I'm concerned that there'll be, um, you know, people looking at this decision that we potentially make if we go in line with the recommendation today, that, you know, that could be like badly reflected, but actually we are following the views of our mana whenua and how do we represent that through our publicity and our comms around this? Uh, there is um, some draft publicity material that has been prepared and um, uh, my recollection is that the rationale is um, clearly as clearly um, described in anticipation of you know being ready to go if you made that decision today but um, depending on what your decision is in a little while I can certainly um, double check that before anything goes out the door. Councillor Holbrook. So thank you for that. The, um, the rationale for this decision is one thing, but are we also going to talk about how we plan to move forward in terms of evolving and refreshing our partnership with iwi and how we plan to have that represent, represented in our governance structure and arrangements? Can I just cut in there and ask Dennis? <coughs> I've asked for the councillors to be briefed in this particular area, but I haven't had a feedback into when that's going to happen. No, we haven't. So we, we will um, address that with you, Mr Mayor. In terms of next steps and whether or not that's um, appropriate to be including in our publicity material, I think um, uh, we are still working with our EWI partners to agree what, what um, process we might follow moving forward. So uh, we would want to be careful not to make... Um, anything more than, I guess, a commitment that we're doing that um, to, to get into too much detail might be problematic because we haven't had that conversation in detail with our AWI partners. Councillor Holiday, then Councillor Elliot. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor. Look, I, I'm aware that Te Whakamino Kapiti uh, is the independent advisory forum for this partnership, but I'm also aware that Tati Awaki Rongatai have withdrawn from that. Um, uh, have we been working with them to bring them back in or to um, resolve the issues that they have with regards to coming back into that advisory partnership? Um, well, that's slightly outside the um, scope of this paper, but I'm, I'm happy to answer questions on it. Um, yes, we have been, um, we are currently, we have received a um, review from Atiawa Kifakarongatai Charitable Trust in relation to the partnership. We've had some initial conversations with them about that. We are um, working through our response to their review and its findings um, that will be coming before you before the end of the financial year. That I think will then um, reinvigorate a conversation with Te Atiawa about next steps, including um, whether or not they feel that it would be appropriate to rejoin Te Whakameninga or Kapiti. But I want to reassure you that um, uh, Te Atiawa having withdrawn from Te um is not um, creating any gap in terms of our engagement with Te Atiawa. We continue to engage directly with Te Atiawa on all of the important issues that this council is dealing with. Um, thank you. I'm just, just a curiosity really, but normally in recommendations on a question like this, it would be 27 that council resolves not to establish and 20, uh, sorry, 26, and in 27 that council <coughs> resolves to establish. Just curious to know why there was just the one option given on this, the way this has been presented. Yeah, I think it, it just goes to being guided um, by the views of our iwi partners on this question, and um, and um, uh, but but yeah, um, so that that is the reason, and thinking that it's it's likely that we might follow the advice of our of our partners. If there are no other questions, oh, Councillor Coates, then Councillor Holborough. Oh, look, I was just going to say if there was no further questions, I waited and there was other names on the screen that I was happy to move. <laughs> so maybe if I move in Councillor Holborough. I'm going to override both of you and now I'm going to bloody move it. Okay. <laughs> Go on then. So, no, uh, Councillor Coates, um, you, there are no other questions? Right. She, can we have that now? Yeah. 
yeah, I, I did have an additional recommendation that I wanted to move, and I'm aware, I'm aware that it's in the body of the report and that we've discussed it, but just in light of Councillor Hanford's comments about trying to ensure that, that our reasoning behind this decision and mm. the intention behind it, it, it is clear, I think it would be good to have the, an actual resolution around that. And I just thought about repeating the paragraph that says that we've consulted um, it says council has consulted independently with each iwi partner to seek their views regarding the establishment of a Māori ward and we could even um, name the partners in there Would you like that to be a noting recommendation that comes before the decision? Yes. Um, would it be useful Please. to just add that to the recommendation 26 therefore yeah. having said yours yeah. therefore council resolves not to establish so it's all wrapped up in one. In one. Yeah. If you're going to move it, you're okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. I think we have to name them. So, so you can kind of you can copy the names from from paragraph seven. So, so they're named in paragraph seven, so you can copy and paste from there. The second sentence, oh, the second half of the first sentence, end of the line. Te Atiawa Ki Whakarongotai Charitable Trust, Nga Hapa Uotaki, Nga Te Raukaua, and Nga Te Tuarangatira. Yeah, are all there, so you don't need to type them in again. That's good. That's way better. You know, I mean, once it's done, then you can move, then you can talk on it. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Rob, did you have, did you want to read something? Oh, that's good. That leads oh. the inference that we are following their advice, not that we've just known that that was. Sure. I don't know whether the table was. Are you happy with that, Jane? I think the, uh, the second option indicates that we are following their advice, mm. not that we've just known Kind of wrapped up in the word therefore if we want to have a little chat while we're waiting. <laughs> so so follow, I, I, I don't know, James, is that right? Following advice? And therefore, so I withdraw my proposal to move this recommendation. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, look, it's been an interesting discussion around the table. What has actually been uh, encouraging to see as the members around this table become more aware of um, our Te Ao Māori world view and also uh, the relationship with our treaty partners. That's reflected through our commitment through the long-term plan. I think some of the questions that you've heard uh, around the table in the last few minutes actually indicates why we have the view from our partners on this particular position. I can understand from Councillor Hanford's point that she was raising that there could be a perception out there that we're going against the flow or of public opinion around uh, Māori wards, but here we have a situation where we have our partners um, relatively happy with the relationship with our council and the, the role they play 
uh, in partnership with us that they look forward to strengthening that partnership. Going to Councillor um, Halliday's points around uh, Te Atiawa, as an example, the review that they've done and implementing the findings of that, hence why their letter refers to that strengthening of the partnership. So that's not seen as a negative in terms of their withdrawal, it, it's simply that things are changing. And I think we'll probably see the landscape with all three change moving forward, uh, and even potentially with um, Te Whakamininga in terms of how that looks moving forward. And that's where their focus would rather be um, than focusing on simply trying to uh, uh, solve a problem that they might not necessarily perceive, perceive as there at the moment in terms of Māori representation through the appointment of a ward. Um, but also noting that they're up for that discussion, just at the moment it's more important for them to work on the existing um, relationship, the existing roles and responsibilities uh, and so forth. So I'm, um, uh, I have no problem supporting the recommendations. I know that nationally there is a, a you know, bit of a spotlight on this topic and it may appear by this um, decision today that we're bucking the trend, but I think that is because of that starting point that I referred to earlier, and often that kapiti is held up as an example of um, uh, generally good relationships with their treaty partners and the way that we've involved them in council business. Um, sure, there are areas that we can um, improve on, and hence we've been, we've been in these discussions with them around improving that relationship, and hence why you as elected members around this table have made a commitment through the long-term plan as well. So I'm happy to support this recommendation and I would um, uh, encourage other elected members to support it well uh, as well um, as a sign to our partners that um, we're in support um, of them in terms of moving the discussion forward and I'm sure at the appropriate time uh, we will likely have a discussion around a Māori ward um, in, a, in a positive manner as well. I'm open for debate. Um, um, Councillor uh, Holiday. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, look, I just wanted to endorse uh, Councillor Coutts' comments. Um, having been to the Te Whakamina meetings most of the trinium, um, it, um, there's another aspect to this, and this is the, um, this is the aspect of Māori in general in regards to the representation. I appreciate the iwi um, partnership that we have and respect the iwi partnership that we have. But I'm also very comfortable uh, within that space uh, taking some um, excerpts from conversations that have been had around that table is um, Te Whakamina talking to strengthen the um, current partnership but feeling there is a good system of representation by Te Whakamina. But uh, what was really um, um, comforting is that if you want to bring governance into the journey, um, so this is a considered, um, a considered uh, approach moving forward, which um, I've, I think um, bodes well for the future. Um, I am just hoping, well not hoping, uh, on what I've heard from the comments today that um, that we will be reviewing these systems. We are looking at um, the um, pathways forward in this space and um, I'm certainly looking forward to seeing how that is. And I do agree with uh, Councillor Coates that we are in a bit of a unique situation here and we've got a, um, a, a good good base to be working from. It's a bit different than everyone else's but it, it served us well um, and I look forward to seeing it being refined in such a way that it serves us well into the future. Uncle Compton. Yeah, I, this is a difficult one for me because in principle I support having a Māori ward and Kapiti was rightfully hailed as a trailblazer in terms of our partnership with Mana Whenua 27 years ago and I feel like right now we might be starting to look like we're a bit of a laggard given where the rest of the country is going and especially where the rest of the region appears to be going as well and that makes me deeply uncomfortable. I feel that we are potentially missing a big trick here because it's not an either or thing. We can strengthen our partnership with mana whenua and we can increase Māori representation at this main table um, so that they have a vote on the big issues that come to the top table, which they, which Māori don't have at the moment under our current structure. Um, looking at what Wellington City Council's doing, they are remunerating each iwi on the basis that they would be providing a full councillor effectively to all of their uh, committees and then they're also having that a Māori, well they're looking likely that they'll have a Māori ward as well, they'll, I think they're deciding next week. Um, having said all that, I think uh, the points that Councillor Coots has raised and uh, that Councillor Halliday repeated as well around mana whenua play a huge role in this and ultimately I yeah, struggle to vote against this um, resolution 
given that mana whenua is supported. So with that in mind, I would say that I don't, I'm not comfortable with, the, with um, not establishing a Māori ward now, but it's out of respect to the, um, the view of AAV partners that I'll be supporting this. Councillor Elliot. Um, thank you. Um, earlier this year, we, uh, some of us attended a, a day workshop, a regional workshop in Wellington, and had the opportunity to sit in the room with other council elected members, uh, governance groups, and other iwi from around the lower North Island. Some of the angst in that room was palpable. It was unpleasant. And as a table, I noticed that I sat here with my colleagues, and when we were asked to give the view of our table, we looked around for our iwi partner, who we knew was somewhere in the room, because without her voice joining our table, we could not give our, our, our opinion. And so I look at those words there, uh, following the recommendation of our three iwi partners, as something to be cherished. The fact that Te Whakaminga right now is in a state of replenishing is, I feel, a good thing. It's a part of the growth journey. This is a very culturally safe place, and I think a really lovely, a lovely space for us to be in, and I do support this on the advice of our iwi. Councillor Hanford. Yeah, I think it's it's awesome to be sitting around a table with people who do have an understanding of that Tiao Māori worldview. So I'd like to endorse Councillor Coote's comments on that, and even just having the opportunity to um, learn so much myself and to learn so much from our iwi partners over this last kind of year and a half of being in this role. And I think that actually by taking the guidance and the advice directly from our mana whenua, that's an act of strengthening partnership anyway. So I think that this is actually a great. Um, you know, another step on that journey for us to making sure that we're truly embodying um, that partnership, that treaty partnership. Um, and I think, as we've seen, there's a bit of mahi to do out there in our community of making sure that our community knows how to honour and amplify the voices of mana whenua, um, you know, in that partnership that we do have. But I think we need to be ensuring that we're doing what we can um, and and leading by example and taking their lead. So I think that this is just a way that we can show we're doing that and hopefully um, the community sees that and hopefully people across the country see that, that we do have a strong base and that should be, you know, that should be kind of, yeah, elevated and, and people should aspire to, to that as well and people within the community too, so, yeah. Councillor Holbrook. Yes, I'm perfectly comfortable with this decision. Um, it's either we do or we don't have a Māori ward, and in that way we have been presented with an either-or by our iwi partners, and they have said that it is not what they see as the best way for iwi to be represented at this time. What they would prefer to see is for us to focus on strengthening and improving our relationships, which we've so carefully established over the last 27 years. So. I talk all everything that James has said and very comfortable giving this my vote. Anybody else? Um, I would have expected um, councillors to have very strong views around this. We know that this issue has been highly politicised nationally. Um, and I think it's really important to my view of the situation is that when you talk about Maori, you talk about the ability to whakapapa and you whakapapa to the land where you are, that's the mana whenua. So when you talk about relationship with Maori, even if you're looking at the Local Government Act, that means your first port of call is the mana whenua. And therefore, like and many of you have uh, outlined, that the mana whenua have advised us they need to strengthen that is only through strengthening that, that this, the ability to strengthen all Maori, including Matawaka, can be realized. I think that's a very rational approach to take. We are in a very safe, in an incredibly safe political position to make this decision um, because we've already, like Councillor Coates has mentioned, we have already had 25 years of relationship with local EV. And therefore, based on that, we are taking this step and we know, as it has been pointed out, that it is through strengthening this relationship we can then go on for the next stage of looking at a Maori ward on the advice of Manafenwa. I feel perfectly comfortable with this. So, with that, 
uh, right of reply. Councillor Coates. Thank you, Your Worship. Just briefly, I just want to acknowledge the comments of fellow elected members and the um, uh, and your mindfulness in terms of the comments that you've made. Also, want to acknowledge the comment that Councillor Compton made. It is a difficult decision. Uh, you know, for, I know for many of us, we'd, when it was announced, the, your first thought would be yes to a Māori ward. Um, but I, you know, as I thought about it, it's what it's important, and Councillor Compton touched on in terms of the respect of our partners' views. Um, and that's sort of um, right at the forefront of it. But I think as equally is that we follow through with that commitment to strengthen those partnerships and relationships. So it's one thing to say it, uh, it's another thing to do it. It would be a shame to move these recommendations today and then look back in 12 to 18 months time and, the, uh, um, we, have, and we haven't progressed some of that work around strengthening that. So um, I'm not assuming that will happen, but I, I think it's prudent to say that now that we've got to um, walk the walk and talk the talk um, and back up why we've made the decision that we have today um, and then be ready for that discussion next time around where we look forward to potentially introducing a Māori ward. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, I now put uh, amended recommendation 26, as you can see out there. Moved by Councillor Coates, seconded by Councillor Holbro. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Those against, carry it. Thank you very much. Right, next um, agenda item 8.3, submissions, the long-term plan for Greater Wellington Regional Council in Horizons Regional Council, page 24. Yep, Lisa. Tenekoto, Kiara O. Um, the report that's before you is about the submissions we've made on the long-term plans from Greater Wellington Regional Council and Horizons Regional Council. Um, due to the timing of the submissions, uh, we were unable to put a draft before you um, for input before um, these were released, so these submissions have already been released. Um, there's a number of submissions that we're inputting into at the moment, um, and a few of them, the time or the resources won't allow us to bring them before you. Um, Freedom Campaign is an example of that. Um, but um, I'll, I think I'll just take the report as read. It attaches the submissions um, behind. Um, interested to hear any questions, and also um, we have an opportunity to submit on the Greater Wellington Regional Council um, in in person at the oral hearings as well. So interested to see if you would like to attend those. Thank you. Um, am I right that this is the first time we have made a uh, submission to the Horizons? I believe that is. Yes. Okay. Roll up, roll up. Uh, yep, so I would actually quite like to... Councillor Elliot. I would like to um, attend at um, Greater Wellington Submission Process Hearing Process. Thank you. Is that a question? No. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Court, then Councillor Com. Um, look, it isn't a question. Um, Lisa, however, did ask um, around elected members' interest in attending, and so before we go. Before we go to that, um, I would like to say that the previous training, um, a group of us did make the trip down for the first time. Uh, I think there was three or four of us that went down and spoken and yeah, and it was and along uh, supportive of staff. And what I wanted to say was that it was very um, uh, beneficial. Um, we certainly um, felt it was worthwhile um, to look the uh, regional councillors in the eye and express our views around their um, plan at the time. So. I, I just wanted to put that before everyone makes the decision that they're not going to be all, you, you get no names. I think it's important for you to consider whether you wanted to, as Councillor Elliott has. What we did the last time, we split the topics and went for it, which is really good. Councillor Compton. 
I was going to say that obviously as the uh, GWRC portfolio holder, I'd be very happy to go along, but it all depends what day of the week it is, as long as I may have two sprogs with me, which which they make for a fun submission. <laughs> There'd be lots of trains asked for. Um, so actually my question was, when are the public hearings? Do we know yet what the specific dates are? So they're planned at the moment for the 18th to the 20th of May. So um, that, that's that's the over days, four, so. four days, um, but they haven't actually confirmed at the moment. We haven't had any approach, but um, we'll let you know as soon as they offer times and dates to us. Cool. Any, any other questions? I don't have any questions in relation to the submissions yeah. itself, but I've made some feedback to the staff directly on the transport related um, topics that have been reflected in the submissions. I would be um, happy to attend the Horizons one. Um, if there was an intention to speak to that um, and I don't have a, a burning desire to do the GW1 but if there is the need for uh, numbers I'm happy to be involved in that one as well but equally happy to, for the likes of Councillor Compton and others too instead. Would there be any question, Councillor Compton would you like to move this? Can I get a seconder? Yep. Councillor Coates. Um, right of intro. Yeah, I'd just like to um, thank the team for the work in putting these together. They, uh, I also got a chance to put on them before they got sent through as well, so that was really um, appreciated as well, because I know that they've obviously been, there's been a huge focus on the long-term plan and all that at the moment, so they're under some pressure to get it done. So I think they're both really good submissions, so tackling some of the really big issues that are facing our district in relation to the the services and the infrastructure that uh, these two regional councils provide us. So, yeah, just want to commend the, the team on um, all the work on this. Open for debate. Anybody else? Councillor Coates. Uh, look, just to reiterate what Councillor Compton says, it's, um, you can tell when the staff have read, uh, written a good submission when you don't actually have a lot to, um, to add. So there was a, a few points there, but it, it wasn't an essay <laughs> um, to feed back to Lisa and the team. So um, uh, they know the community well, and I think it was a reasonably um, or very well put together um, submission on both topics. Councillor Holiday. Um, actually, just echoing the uh, views of the previous two councillors, um, it would be nice to have been able to workshop this, but I appreciate everyone is under the pump, especially with long-term plan. Uh, so reading the submission, it was like, ah, OK, well, it hits everything on, on the uh, button quite nicely. So, um, no, that's absolutely fantastic, and I'll certainly try and get down there if I can as well. Councillor Holbro. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, it's a great, it's a lovely submission. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but I did have another point to make. Somebody came along to the Nati Tour um, consultation on our long-term plan, and he had mm. our document in one hand, and he had the Greater Wellington document in the other hand, and he said, how do these two talk to each other? Oh. So as we're at the start of another three-year cycle, I would really like to have a serious discussion with Greater Wellington about how we have early conversations because it's nice to submit into something, but as we all know, the important discussions happen earlier. And though it's slightly different, we change things with how we work with our community boards, having those discussions earlier, rather than relying on them to submit later. And I think that's working a lot better in terms of them being able to bring their needs and views into the process in a timely and meaningful way. And I would like to see something like that happening more effectively at a governance level too, as Councillor Halliday has alluded to, as well as at an organisational level. Councillor Elliot. Um, look, thanks. Um, there were just a few things. Um, connections to the rail network and public transport and all tapi. You know, some of these statements in here, we've been asking them for many years, and I was wondering if it would not be a bit stronger uh, vocab is to find out how many years we have been continuously submitting the same question and putting that in, um, just to make it a little bit more of a point of point. Uh, Council Elliot, I think when you uh, go for the hearing, you um, may want to ask the question oh, to them. And I would just and to do with one other, but you can respond. So. The irony is that the wording wasn't as you see it there, and so we did include um, the wording where it refers to 
the duration in terms of a number of years, but not specific. But I think as his worship has said, um, so I've made the point that you made, uh, I think it understated that we've been asking for this for years. So the, the wording was different, but as his worship has said, it's um, something that could be brought up in the hearings. And uh, thanks, just to recap, on our proposed rating changes, financial impacts, didn't we ask Greater Wellington Regional Council last year to contribute a sum to the rates for emission fund? And that was perhaps turned down. So I'm wondering if that could be reiterated because it's not in here. Just some clarification, guys. I, I recall that EC was raised with them that we do that, they should be doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah. But um, again, remember that. Can we just clarify first, though, and I'm not always right, but I'm fairly certain they do provide some rates for emission. So before we give them both barrels, it might just be helpful to find out first. Yeah. I, I will. I will find some information on that and let you know, and research the previous submissions as well for when we've. I guess. Anybody else? Otherwise, um, recommendation twenty moved by Councillor Compton. Seconded by Councillor Coots. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Carry it. That was actually a very good. Page 29, 39 to 43, the minutes of 18th March 2021. No issues. Will somebody move that recommendation? One. Mm. Councillor Coates moved it. Councillor Elliott seconded it. No. No. The question, you You've got question. a question. I don't know if it's appropriate, but there is a resolution 8.3 from the Standing Committees and the Community Boards. Uh, Moved by Councillor myself, seconded by Councillor Ali um, Compton, and it was for the Fotomaku Stream walkway to be made uh, wheelchair safe. And Sean, handy that you're here. I was wondering if that is already can be done within the existing budget, or whether or not we should be adding it to the LTT. So the. Uh, <coughs> The resolution was to note that recommendation. Um, I'm not aware of us having a, that project currently in the long-term plan in terms of funding. So, um, well, if you wanted to add it to the long-term plan, then you, you would um, would need to bring it up when we we sign off or we work through. The submissions to the long-term plan, uh, and then finalise the long-term plan itself, uh, which I'm not sure of the date that is, but that would that would be over and above what's currently in the long-term plan in terms of budgets. Well, thank you for clarifying that. Can Can I just add something to that? I think that it might be in as part of the stride and ride. Uh, Alison's shaking her head, but there, I'm not. I don't no. don't believe it is. Stride and Ride was the, um, well, Alison can... Uh, the, can the, the chair didn't call you to the phone. But please do. 
Sorry, I was being over helpful. Um, <laughs> as part of the long term plan, there's extra money in the budget to provide for improved services around accessibility, but that will just be us chipping away at things each year. There isn't anything in there as a specific project. So, to do this properly, it would be additional funding. I think we can maybe have a chat offline about that, but um, it isn't something in terms of a project that we, in terms of scale and scope and costs, I'd expect that some work to do to do that. And the time frames that we're working on at the moment, I don't believe we'd be able to um, to come back with probably a realistic number that you would then look to potentially add to the long-term plan at this late in the process. But I'm happy to talk about it uh, outside the meeting. So, okay, 8.3, you've got a point of clarification. That's going to be sorted off, offline. You're right. So, no other issues. Um, somebody move recommendation one. Councillor Elliott moved it. Councillor Buswell seconded it. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Okay. Now, recommendation number two minutes for the 25th of March 2021 as a true and accurate record. Any issues with that? Page 2044 to 50. Uh, no. Can I have. Yep. Um, Page 45, there's a repeated word, um, members' business, 6A. R, R, R. You've been a pirate. Yeah. So, it's a typo? It's a typo, yeah. Okay. Could I just, uh, come, could I just clarify, I left, um, the minutes reflect that I left the meeting early. Um, and I should know this by now, but um, in terms of voting, should I, I won't be obviously moving seconding because I wasn't here for the entire meeting, but in terms of voting, should I abstain? Because in that I didn't, no, it's no, only no. the minutes. So. No, no. Okay. no, it's only the minutes and so. <laughs> right, so um, can somebody move recommendation two? Quick. Oh, oh, thank you very much. Councillor Holbrook moved it. Councillor Buswell seconded it. No, you can't. Seconded by Councillor Elliott. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Again. Okay, done. Public speaking time covering items that are not on the agenda. There's nobody. Um, I'm going to move to go into public exclusion. Can I have a seconder? Seconded. We are now going to public exclusion. Uh, thank you very much for the community board chairs. Thank you. And we'll take a five-minute break.